Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today, we have a good opportunity on this 2014 Chevy Spark to do a battery and charging system diagnosis. Uh, I want to do a complete walkthrough how to diagnose your electrical system uh, that includes you know, a valid battery check, a charging system check, and of course, a parasitic draw test. Uh, those three things are necessary for a healthy uh, charging system, keep your battery uh, alive for a, a good long time. Customer complaint, well this vehicle is, he said it's been leaving him stranded. He drives it somewhere, you know, doesn't stall out or anything, leaves it, comes back in an hour, da -da 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 -da, you know, classic low battery, starter doesn't engage, he jumps it, drives off, no problem. Just from those symptoms, what would you say? My first guess is charging system's fine. He might have a parasitic draw, but if he only leaves it for an hour and the battery's dead, that tells me the battery is cooked. It the capacity is just you know diminished and it can barely hold enough charge for one crank or sometimes even doesn't want to crank this little 1.2 liter fire breather. So you know where do you begin? Well, let's, uh, let's review the tools that we'll need and basically go through a process. It should take about five minutes to check the whole charging system and be 100% accurate. And look at this thing. It's so short. It basically doesn't have a trunk. Probably fit two of these in my small garage. This pile of crap wasn't here. But anyways, what are you going to need? My favorite tool for charging system diagnostics is my amp clamp. You need a DC setting so that can measure current. So right here in the amp setting, you can measure 40, 400, or 800 amps, uh, and you want and you want that to say DC. They sell clamps that only measure AC. That's not what you need for a car 12 volt system. You want the DC. So here we go. Turn this baby on to the 40 amp setting, and as you can see here. We're at 2.7, that's, you know, we're not measuring anything, so we hit the zero button, it's zeroed out. So you want to you make sure it says DC and zero. Now this, we're just going to use to measure current. You can get away with just using this in the current and voltage setting, but every time you turn the amps, you need to reset it, it's kind of a pain in the butt. That's why we have our other trusty little voltmeter here. We'll just turn that to volts. Just throw it on the battery. 2.6 volts or 12.6. Healthy battery, right? Fantastic. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. Uh, this guy, I'm going to leave in the amp setting and just stick on the negative battery cable. And we'll try to start it, see what happens to our voltage. Uh, to make this process clear, we're going to go to the whiteboard of knowledge here and draw a little schematic. If you can picture where the current is going and all the components in the system, you'll make your diagnosis that much clearer and you'll understand what's going on and uh, you know, that's the name of the game. If you understand it, you can make an accurate diagnosis. So anyways, let's try to crank this baby. Let's look at our voltage real time. We'll set this guy up here or up here. Twelve point one with just with the door open, you see the voltage drop like half a volt. Key on. Uh oh. Nine volts. Eight volts. Damn jackhammer. We don't want that. Turn it off. We're down to ten volts. Right off the bat, battery's shot. I mean, it went from twelve point six to ten just with turning the key on. Um, however. The customer says he took this battery to two places, like a battery warehouse, a specialty store, and some other like uh, advanced auto parts, and they put their fancy little gizmo on it, and it pressed the button, and it said, battery's good, just needs a charge. He put on the trickle charger, whatever. So what does that tell you? Don't trust the little battery testers. Just do, all you need is a voltmeter and an amp clamp, and uh, 
let's see how to do further testing. All right, we're on the whiteboard. Let us start with the heart of the electrical system, the battery itself. There's your minus post, and this is gonna be our positive post. So what is a battery? A battery is something that holds charges at 12 volts, okay? Now again, we're not going to go into the nitty gritty details, just enough to understand conceptually what is going on. So let's say a good healthy battery, fully charged, is going to have 6 units of energy, <laughs> 12 volts. So imagine these as charges sitting on the positive side, waiting to do work. <clears throat> Let's put a load on the battery. So wire, switch, this is going to be our load back to the negative. The charges want to go from positive to negative, right? If you short it out, you'll have a huge current. All these charges will rush over here and neutralize the battery. I mean, you can short the battery out and eventually you'll have zero volts, right? So. Let's say this load, once the switch is closed, is one amp. What does that mean? What does a battery rating mean? 65 amp hours. That means if you close the switch and the load is one amp, ideally it'll take 65 hours to completely deplete the battery. Now obviously the voltage will drop gradually, the current will diminish, you know, with Linearly with the voltage, uh, since we all know that voltage equals current times resistance, Ohm's law. So that always applies, and with that, you can basically diagnose the entire system. Okay, now, so that's a great, you know, good, healthy battery uh, at full capacity. What's going on with, with the Chevy Spark here? Well, over time, the storage capacity of the battery just gets worse. The chemistry inside of there changes, you know, the cells get, I don't know what happens, sulfation or, I'm not, I'm not a chemistry person by any means, but now the fully charged battery at 12 volts will just have one charge here. And you put a load on it and it'll deplete it Instead of 65 hours, it'll be like two minutes. <laughs> so uh, that's what happens when your uh, capacity drops to a non-usable state. You can't even you know, turn your engine over once. Uh, you leave your headlights on for a minute, it'll also drain the battery. So um, where do we want to go from here? So this is a way to discharge the battery. Now we want to look at the way to charge the battery. So let's draw in our alternator. So again, it'll connect to both positive and negative. And what does an alternator do? It uses the mechanical energy from the engine to charge up the battery. And we can even you know, calculate how much uh, work needs to be done to charge a battery at a certain uh, amperage. But in any case, alternator is usually drawn with some coils, electromagnetic induction. It goes through a rectifier and you know it's AC, but to keep things simple, what does it do? It, it forces the charges back from the negative side to the positive side. So if your battery is discharged, you'll have charges here at zero volts, basically you know, not ready to do work. <laughs> and then over here, charges at 12 volts. So the alternator forces these charges back to here. Eventually, eventually all the charges will be back at 12 volts and your battery will be fully charged and at that point 
even though the alternator is spinning, it, it won't be able to push any more charges into the battery. So that gives us a great diagnostic approach is if we put an amp clamp around here. Now again, let's not worry about the load for now. If we just had an alternator and a battery, what would the current be when the battery is fully charged? Pretty close to zero. I mean, at 14 volts there might be a little, you know, you can like boil the battery if you go too, um, too high in voltage, but eventually the current will drop close to zero when your battery is fully charged. Right? Car's running. Now last step, if the car's running, you'll have things using you know, electrical energy. Your fuel injectors, fuel pump, headlights, everything, right? So you'll have, if you measure current here, so maybe 20 amps. Just to keep the car running. So the alternator has to put out 20 amps to keep the car running, and if the battery is discharged, it also needs to put out, you know, a certain amount of current to charge the battery. Now I've seen batteries that are discharged, they'll take like 70 amps initially, because it's really easy to bring, you know, the charges back to the positive side, and the alternator, you know, it could be rated at 100 amps, it'll put out pretty close to its rating, because, you know, it's being used full field, charge the battery, and run the car. So, that's an overview, very simple overview of the electrical system. So, using this picture, we can uh, take our amp clamp and our voltmeter and basically check every part of this. So, we already saw that just by the voltage measurement, we didn't have enough charges stored here, even though the voltage was good. So, Right away it tells you 12.6 volts, it doesn't mean you have a good battery, it just means that you know, the one charge that's left here is st you know, still keeping the voltage up, but it doesn't have enough potential to you know, engage the starter, run your lights, and uh, you know, other electrical components. So, what's the next check on this vehicle? What I want to do is when the car is running, put an amp clamp just around the negative battery cable and that will check the charging current from the battery. Now, does it matter if we put our amp clamp here or here? No, it doesn't. The current should be exactly the same. Conservation of charge. Charge is not created, it's just being moved around you know, into the battery or out. So, the only thing that will change is if, you know, you orient your amp clamp, this will be, the amperage here will be, let's say, with a negative sign, and here it'll be with a positive sign. So keep in mind on the amp clamp, if the current is going through the jaws that way, it's going to show a plus on the screen. That's all. Um, just keep that in mind. It can mess you up. If you want to check, is my battery discharging or charging? That sign right there is very, very important. So let's get the car running with a boost pack and see how long it takes for this current right here to drop to zero. So if the battery capacity is very low, it'll take literally less than a minute for this current to drop close to zero, even though we didn't put that much current back in the battery. The capacity is, you know, completely shot. Uh, let's get to it. So using our trusty NOCO, it's ready to go. This thing should crank right up. Alright, it's running. As you can see, 
No warning lights, it's happy. Lights are bright. Turn this guy off. Take it off the vehicle. All right, what do we got? Fifteen volts. <laughs> so that's another variable. We're assuming that the charging system just has a set point of fourteen. These new cars, the charging voltage can be anywhere from twelve and a half to like you know fifteen volts, as we see here. Actually, okay, yeah, we're. So it's trying to boost this battery here, but look at our charging current. It's only six amps. That's nothing. Almost down to four. Again, another strike for the battery. The alternator is doing its thing. It's putting out 15 volts, but there's no current. Recharging the battery. The battery can't accept the current. So next step, see we're 14.7, uh, take three amps. Let's turn off the headlights and shut the vehicle off. So we're at 13.4, uh, that's the surface charge. And now, what do we see there? Negative 2.7. So is the current leaving the battery? It's going through the jaws from our negative cable, right? So does that make sense? That means the current is coming that way. That makes perfect sense. If our jaws were over here, you know, through the meter, you would say positive 2.7. Through one of these loads, the car's not asleep yet, back into the battery. So that's why we're reading negative 2.7 amps. See our jaws are this way, so the current's coming from the back of the meter. That's why we have a negative sign. This car should go to sleep very soon. Maybe we can Take the key out, close the door, lock it. We're down to 12.5. That current in a minute or so, I already played around with it a little bit, it should drop to, there you go, 1.7. So the modules are falling asleep. 0.8. 0 0.5 Oh, something woke up there. Maybe it's doing an EVAP test. Who knows? Oh, come on. Just go to sleep. <laughs> 1.9 I don't want to wait here all day, but sometimes you do have to wait all day for these new cars to go to sleep. Alright, 0 0.1 and that's within you know the uh, accuracy of the clamp. But in any case 12.5 volts there we go, 0, 0.0 it's basically done it's asleep so, so what? <laughs> Let's see if we turn the headlights on, how fast the voltage will drop. This is a great test. This is my favorite draw test in terms of uh, battery capacity. Headlights on. We have about 15 amps leaving the battery. Look at the voltage. 9.3. Headlights are getting dim. Leave it on here for a minute. But the, you know, the car won't start. 
and this car's automatic headlights, when you exit, it leaves the lights on for like two minutes. That explains why the owner got stranded. He leaves it at the store, locks it, the lights are on for a couple minutes, boom, battery's completely drained. So, you know, that's it. So, literally, this test takes two minutes. So the battery, bad. Alternator, so far, good. They kept the voltage to up to 15 volts. The lights are on, loads are on. Uh, yeah, so not worried about the alternator at this point. Definitely have a bad battery. And we already kind of did a parasitic draw test. Uh, you know, is something staying awake, draining this battery overnight? I don't think so. However, we have to be 100%. That's, you know, why people uh, come to shops to get their car diagnosed properly. So we don't want to just put a battery in this thing, and then it'll, I'm sure it'll work great, but what if there's a parasitic drawing, he leaves it for a week, and then he comes back to a bad battery, or, uh, you know, the battery will actually get damaged by getting drawn down all the way and then uh, the customer will not be happy so I'm gonna have to like eat the battery and then do another diagnosis for free to figure out because I told him everything else is good with your car it just needs a battery right so how do we do a parasitic draw test the right way to be a hundred percent let's turn the lights off Okay. Ah, I see in the clamp timed out there so Every time you gotta see, turn it back on, re zero, put it back on the cable. So, like I said, the accuracy of this thing, when it comes down to like a tenth of an amp, you can't really trust it. It's within the noise level. Uh, so, right now it's saying like 0 0.2 amps. That's still a substantial parasitic draw. That could draw your battery down in, you know, less than a week. So we can't, we're, I'm still not saying there's no parasitic draw, even though, you know, it's showing 0, 0.0, whatever, 0 0.1 amps. Not foolproof. What do we have to do? We have to use our cheapo voltmeter in the amp setting, hook it up in series with the cable and see if there's any current leaving that battery when the car is off and asleep. So let's set that up. It's kind of a particular way to do it, um, but it's the only way to say I don't have a parasitic draw 100%. Let me show you. So the name of the game here is to put this meter in series with one of the cables without waking up the car. We don't want to disconnect the battery because that, when you reconnect it, there will be a surge of current and, well, worst case scenario, we'll blow the fuse in the meter because it might be over 10 amps temporarily. So the way we want to do this is first put our cables in the right place. So we're going to go to the 10 amps port and then go to the amps DC setting it says DC 0, 0.00 amps so this thing will read to what's this place a hundredth of an amp so a one here would be 10 milliamps and that will be you know totally acceptable if it's showing 0 0.01 with everything connected now the trick is to connect the meter across the cable so let's say You don't want your leads to move when this cable comes off, so connect it however you can to uh, prevent that from happening. Make sure you have a really good connection, you know, metal to metal. So here and here. Now we want to take this off the battery. Actually, just a second. Um, you want to connect one 
lead to the battery post, one lead to the terminal wire, and then remove the terminal from the post and that way if there's any current it's going to be forced through your meter instead of from the post to the terminal. So let's figure out a clever way to do that because uh, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Um, let me figure out a way. Alright, let's try it this way. Let's loosen the nut here. Now the terminal should be able to move on the battery. And what I want to do is gently lift up the terminal. Don't let it, you know, you always want to keep contact with the post. So it might slip off, but keep contact. Kind of slide it towards the top. And now we can clip our other lead on the terminal. Now we're safe. Focusing on the meter. See that? Let's see here. Zoom in a little bit. Now what should happen when I take the terminal completely off? If there's any parasitic draw, it will go right through the meter and we'll see it on our display. So here we go. That's off. We see 0 0.16 and now it's 0 0.01. I am completely 100% happy with that. It's, it's even zero. <laughs> that is fantastic. So what does that tell us? We have no parasitic draw on this vehicle at the moment. Doesn't mean, you know, there's no intermittent parasitic draw, but Right now, the only problem with this vehicle is the battery is completely wasted. So you see how that works? Terminal is disconnected. It's not touching right there. If there was any current, it would be going right through the meter. And if we turn the headlights on right now, it would blow the fuse in the meter. Don't do that. So let's quickly recap what we just did. Instead of using a battery or a current clamp, we disconnected this guy and put our in series ammeter from here. So this will be amps on the meter and connect it to right here. All right, and there's absolutely no current flowing through the meter, so all of these loads are off. You know, whatever switch switches these guys when the car's off and asleep, all these loads should be off. Now, obviously, the switch can be an ignition switch, a relay, a transistor, etc. Um, and any one of those could malfunction and keep the load on and drawing your battery. So, I think that's it. Then we covered all the bases here. Battery check, alternator output check, and parasitic draw test. If you have a meter, boom, this is literally less than five minutes. If the car goes to sleep, like it should, <laughs> um, you're done. Calling the battery, I got one in stock. Let's put it in, this car should be fixed. By the way, whenever you're done doing a current test, Always, always, always put the lead back in here. It'll save your meter. It won't blow the fuse next time you use it. All right, brand new Napa Legend installed. Last connection, you'll see a spark. And it's such a small car, maybe it's a really small spark. Tighten down. <laughs> Damn, that's a loud ass horn for such a small car. <laughs> Sorry, headphones users. Make sure it starts up.
Beautiful. I like it. All right. Final quick check. Let's throw the meter back on. I want to see how big the charging current can be. I mean, this battery, when they're sold, they're pretty much charged, but they've been sitting on the shelf a little bit, so it should accept quite a bit of current initially uh, when we start it up. All right, got our meter hooked back up. We're starting at 12.47, and our amp clamp is ready to go, zeroed out. Let's fire it up. All right. Look at that. So our charging voltage, alternator's kicking on. There's 14, 15 volts. And look at that, we're charging at 23 amps now. About 20 amps, beautiful. Hope this little engine can keep the alternator spinning, right? S Tech. <laughs> Sweet. The car's really boosting it right now. It's about 15.1 volts. And our charging current, about 15. You see the amperage is dropping, so that's that's normal. The batteries. Are I assume pretty well charged from the store, but that's you know that's a good number. The batteries are accepting a charge. Lights are on. Everything's good. Good deal. Now we can put our amp clamp instead of seeing battery current. We can put it on the positive. And I think one of these fat cables on the side is the alternator coming in, charging the battery, and there's two skinnier cables that go to whatever else, you know, the car accessories. So let's throw the amp clamp on this batter cable. If I can get the uh, jaws around it, sometimes it's, that's the tricky part is getting your meter situated. So let's see here. This guy in there somehow. Yeah. Alright, what do you, what number do you see down there? About 32 amps. Okay. So back to the whiteboard. If our amp clamp is from the alternator coming into the battery, right here. That's gonna be whatever we wrote, 20 amps plus the charging current going into the battery. Now we can even figure that number out. So we have 32 here. We had 12 over here. So what's the remainder going to all the loads? Right around 20 amps. That was a pretty good uh, ballpark guess. <laughs> we can you know, switch the headlights off. Now that current should drop by about 15 amps. So, yep, that's about right. We're Right at 17, 18, somewhere around there. Beautiful. So, keeping this simple picture in mind, you can use the amp clamp to very quickly, non intrusively, diagnose the entire system the battery, the alternator, and the loads. Beautiful, right? So, I think we uh, did a pretty thorough job here. Do you have any questions, comments? Put them down below. If there's enough good questions, we can make a follow-up video. No problem. Uh, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, good luck diagnosing your charging systems. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.